go ahead and proceed. Uh, I want to say good afternoon to everybody. Happy Tuesday. Um, uh, my name is Victor Shin. I'm president and uh, chairman of the board of the Asian Business League of San Francisco. And this is the second round of PPP and other financing resources. Uh, we were able to muster together a great group of panelists and speakers here uh, to provide you information about the upcoming SBA PPP and other resources uh, that the state of California has for uh, many of the business owners. Um, as you know, uh, you know, due to the pandemic, uh, we've had a lot of and uh, many struggling uh, businesses. And of course, uh, everybody has been affected by this pandemic. Uh, but we felt that it was very important that we bring out information to the community so everyone knows what resources are available out there. I'm gonna start with our host first, uh, Tong Kin. Uh, Tong happens to be a fellow board member of mine also. So thank you, Tong. But a quick background about Tong. Uh, Tong has more than 20 years of experience working in the financial management field. And this includes a unique blend of public and private sector clients. Tong founded TPGI CPA to help businesses and nonprofit organizations and governmental entities with their financial management needs. Prior to that, Tong was the deputy CFO for the SBA, where she led the CFO staff of 140 professionals with an annual budget of a billion dollars and a loan portfolio of more than a hundred billion. She also represented SBA at the White House Asian American Pacific Island Initiative under President Barack Obama and spearheaded SBA's outreach to the AAPI community. In the private sector, Tong has operated as a financial management executive, leading audit and consulting engagements and assisting technology startups from initial launch and fundraising stages to growth, mergers, acquisition, and exit stages. So with that being said, I'm handing it over to you, Tong. Thank you, Victor, for the introduction. Um, the second round, or should I say the third round of PPP loan started about two weeks ago. There is still a lot of confusion and the questions from the small business community. Today, we're very lucky to have invited the experts who can help us. Julie Klaus, the district director for the SBA San Francisco District Office, will share with us the various support programs for small businesses. Pauline Dumas from Baker Tilly will share with us how to apply for the PPP loan and apply for the forgiveness of the PPP loan. Last but not least, we have Gary Lee from CTBC Bank to tell us about the underwriting secrets about the PPP loan. And of course, there's always one more thing. As a surprise, the state treasurer Fiona Ma will join us around 1.45 to share with us the various state resources for small businesses from the California state government. So please make sure you stay with us until the end. Actually, we have so much useful information for you. The one hour will fly by really fast. And then you will ask for more and more. All right, let's start with today's agenda first. Uh, first, Julie will go over the resources available from the SBA. Then we will have Pauline go over the nuts and bolts for, uh, of the PPP loan and the forgiveness requirement. After the presentation, we will have a panel discussion with Q&A format. Everyone is muted to avoid the background noises. Please use the chat feature if you need to communicate with me. If you have questions, please ask by sending them in the chat feature on the bottom menu. We will have about 20 minutes to answer your questions. Um, Julie, would you uh, like to get started first? Sure, thank you. Thank you, Tong. Um, so yes, uh, welcome. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. And I only have a few minutes with you to kick off before we get into the meat of this with the PPP program. But I did like to take the opportunity to kind of give you a quick overview of all things SBA, 
Um, and then also some of the other COVID related financing programs that you may or may not be aware of. Um, I do like to remind my you know, people of the different programs and services SBA offers, because as you're looking holistically at your business and thinking about new lines of revenue, and there's a lot of other resources that you may want to think about tapping into. Um, you know, F3, everything SBA offers can be divided really into these four buckets. Uh, there's the access to capital, government contracting, business advising, and then disaster assistance. Uh, one of the questions I get is, are banks still lending? And I know we have a, a lender on the line, but the answer is yes. So our regular programs, whether it's microfinancing, our, our government guaranteed loans through the banks, or even the equity financing through our small business investment companies, uh, they're all still happening. And they're happening at about the same level as um, pre-COVID. So that's good news. Good news for everybody who might be looking to borrow. Uh, government contracting is another area I just wanted to highlight that we have a lot of different programs and services, including a lot of federal uh, certification programs that are designed to help you as a small business owner kind of break into government contracting and start learning how to do business with the federal government uh, so that you can um, hopefully grow your business uh, through, through doing business with the government. As you know, U.S. government is the largest purchaser of goods and services in the world. And here in California, the federal government uh, in a, in a non-COVID uh, year spends about $50 billion with businesses in California. The small business share of that is, is less than 23%, less than 20% typically. So there's definitely room for, there's definitely opportunities and uh, behind the scenes here in our district office, we are also working with our, our fellow federal agencies to try to create even more opportunities for our small businesses um, to obtain contracts. So if that's something you'd ever thought about, this might be the time to explore uh, and see if that could be a good revenue stream for you. The other thing that we offer that I really am encouraging businesses of all shapes and sizes to take advantage of right now is the free business advising. So we offer free uh, confidential one-on-one -on -one business advising uh, primarily through our resource partners, which uh, small business development centers, SCORE, Women Business Centers, and we even have a Veteran Business Outreach Center here in Northern California. So what's great about these sources is that, you know, if you're struggling to figure out which of these programs, these COVID programs might work for you, great to work with an advisor and figure out which of these, these tools might be best for your business, what's gonna benefit you the most. Uh, but also if you're just looking uh, for ways to rethink about your business strategy, figure out where you want to go, what you want to do to try to um, continue weathering the COVID storm that we're in and looking for new opportunities. Great to have a business advisor to, to help you with that conversation as well. Um, the last bucket, disaster assistance. You can go to the next slide, please. This is where uh, we've been spending a lot of our time, unfortunately, in this past year. Um, so under normal conditions, SBA does come in and work uh, to assist businesses, homeowners, landlords, renters, pretty much everybody who uh, has suffered some sort of loss due to uh, the disaster. Um, obviously, COVID has been declared as a disaster for the federal government. And because of that, we have several programs, but we also have a lot of new programming and new um, appropriations. Uh, as, as the government looks to provide more and more relief, especially to our small business community. So the, the overall COVID relief that I kind of want to just make you aware of falls into two buckets, the debt deferment and relief bucket, and then the loans and grants bucket. So under debt deferment and relief, uh, if you have an existing prior, prior to COVID, pre-existing disaster loan through SBA, uh, your monthly payments are being deferred. They were deferred um, through the end of 2020. They are now continuing to be deferred in 2021, at least through the end of March. Similarly, if you have um, the SBA debt relief program has been reauthorized uh, and refunded. So this was a program by which SBA is paying um, principal and interest payments on existing SBA debt that's in good standing. So if you had a 7A loan, a 504 loan, uh, or even a microloan, SBA can pay the principal and interest 
uh, on those on that debt. Um, that program has allows us to extend what was previously enacted for another three months. Uh, and there are certain circumstances where um, new debt and people with um, that might qualify as uh, under this targeted group can have more than a three month uh, extension on getting their principal and interest paid. So not a lot of publicity on this program, but I think a huge benefit to anybody who has existing SBA backed debt. Uh, so the loans and grants side, uh, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan or EIDL loan is the working capital loan that's available directly from SBA. Um, this is the program that's been in existence since March of last year and remains in existence. So if you, this is a loan, this does not have any sort of forgivable component to it, but it is for working capital purposes. Um, so you can use it for pretty much any ordinary business expenses. Uh, for businesses, the, the loan terms are, are pretty uh, favorable. 3.75% interest rate, and it comes with an automatic 30 year term. And the only collateral SBA is taking is just a, a blanket UCC uh, on your business assets, no, no real estate assets. So it's pretty straightforward um, and it's pretty favorable terms uh, for people who are looking for working capital to help support their business uh, as they recover from COVID. Uh, you've also probably heard tangentially to this is a program called Targeted Idle Advance Grant. This is not the same program from this past summer, the Idle Advance. It is actually a different program, although it bears a similar name. Uh, but there's a lot of information on our website, so I'm not gonna go too terribly in depth right now because I will run out of time, but uh, it's, it's for people who have maybe applied for idle advance and uh, did not receive the full amount or did not receive any funds under that program because the money ran out. Uh, if you are in either of those two categories, you will get a message from SBA that will tell you what to do for next steps on how to potentially um, be considered for the targeted idle advance grant and what those criteria will be, because there are different criteria to qualify for the targeted EIDL grant. Um, the other grant that program that has not yet opened, but will be opening very soon is the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. So this is, this is also a grant for the types of organizations you see listed on the screen. And this will be um, a grant directly from SBA. Uh, this program is still being propped up, but there are, we are continuing to put information on our website. Um, there's also brand new FAQs that talk a little bit more about it. And there's also enough information to let you figure out how to calculate how much you could potentially be eligible for, which is a great thing uh, as you're looking to see which of these programs will benefit you the most. Um, so we'll click at the next slide. Um, just the co common question is how do I find a PPP lender or any lender that participates in SBA's programs? And we do have two tools on our website. Uh, there's Lender Match, and then there's also one that's it's pretty much Lender Match, but more targeted to the PPP lenders. Uh, you see an example here, I just put in the zip code for the SBA office downtown, and it comes up with the lenders near you that are participating. So these are great tools to, if you're, not sure uh, you know, what lenders are participating, uh, maybe you're looking for a different lender or whatever your needs might be. I did wanna point out this tool to help you find uh, some new lenders. And then quickly, I know Pauline's gonna talk in more in depth, but um, I do want to point out two documents on our website. One relates to the first draw loans and one to the second. First draw just means the very first time you apply for a PPP loan, it could have happened in 2020 or it could be happening today. And second draw is just the second time you apply your second PPP loan. There are two guidance documents unique to each scenario that are extremely helpful for people trying to figure out how much they can qualify for. And then also um, and the second PPP loan if they meet that revenue reduction standard. So I just wanted to point those two out. And then I think my next slide is the resources. So this is how to, to find us here in San Francisco, um, help answer your questions, or you can sign up for our newsletter and have information pushed to you as well. So thank you. Great, thanks, Julie. Um, so the, my name is Pauline Dumas. I'm a director with Baker Tilly um, on the West Coast. Um, I lead the PPP kind of CARES Act practice 
for Baker Tilly on the West Coast and uh, who work, help numerous clients on determining eligibility, forgiveness, and then just argumentation and working with their bank to submit their loan forgiveness uh, application. So today we'll talk about a few of these items. Um, the first is, you know, more detailed, uh, as Julie mentioned, with the PPP2 um, or what we call um, PPP3, I guess now, because this is the third time that the program's really launched. And it's a bit more restrictive now if you're doing a draw Q application. Um, you know, previously you had to have less than 500 employees. Uh, now it's 300. Uh, you would have had to use, um, you have used or will use all of your first PPP loan and also demonstrate a 25% reduction in gross receipts in any calendar uh, quarter of 2020 compared to the same calendar quarter in 2019. Uh, this area is probably the most complex in terms of what, what you're supposed to submit. Uh, the uh, SBA did issue guidance on January 19th on specifics on what you should provide. Um, you know, common for most people, uh, you can provide some unaudited financial statement that's testing to that re reduction or you can provide bank statements if you're a sole proprietor where you really don't have financial statements until you know, your, your tax advisor prepares it for you. Um, so you could provide you know, um, cash receipts, uh, but there are very specific rules that you must follow uh, for both um, profits and nonprofit organizations. And uh, referencing the IFR that were issued on January 19th will tell you what you can and cannot include in gross receipts based on your entity type. And then um, in, in any case for business that were not in operation in Q1, Q2, or Q3, uh, Q3 or Q4 of 2019, there is a pro rata basis on calculation. So you can take that into account as well for your draw two. If you were a draw one loan, so you did not take a PPP loan in 2020, um, your, your limitations um, are different. Uh, basically you, you follow the rules for draw one. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the new loan terms um, are a little bit different from previously. Um, previous loan amount for any entity was 10 million. Uh, now it's no greater than 2 million. Um, also, uh, there's you know there's certain industries that are more hard hit, especially the restaurant and hotel industry. So if you are operating in an industry with a NAICS code of 72, um, you can receive three and a half times your monthly um, average monthly payroll. Um, versus two and a half times for all other industries. And your monthly average payroll cost can be either uh, 2019 payroll or trailing 12 months, 2020. So if you applied today, that essentially would be from February, 2020 to um, January, 2021. Um, the covered period is the same. It's basically, you know, between eight and 24 weeks. So, you know, if you spend all of your PPP loan funds in 20 weeks, you can apply uh, for forgiveness then. You don't have to wait the full for 24 weeks. And then um, borrowers who did not qualify for PPP loan in 2020 and are eligible for the first draw are not subject to the 25% reduction in gross receipts. And then you can take up to 10 million, just like the first round. Um, so if you did not take advantage of the PPP loan um, from the first round, and you know obviously if you can get more than two million, uh, you're not subject to the, the two million max like we have in draw two. Um, I'm just going to talk about forgiveness because it's actually a very long topic, but I'm just going to talk high level. Um, so we at Baker Tilly assist clients with processing the application, um, and for more complex, you know, loans that have um, you know, FTE reductions or furloughs and then bringing back people. There's a lot of different rules that you have to consider. Um, and the rules have been updated most recently, January 20th. And I could believe it was actually January 19th when those rules were updated for the loan forgiveness application and the new uh, loan forgiveness application were issued both for the draw one and draw two, basically as a checkbox in the new application. And the guidance did update some additional costs that you can um, can um, utilize in your PPP loan forgiveness application. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, there are limits to you know what you can include in the forgiveness amount. And one one big topic is the owner compensation. So let's say in 2019 you didn't pay yourself anything. Um, in 2020, you know you got a PPP loan. Um, if you didn't pay yourself anything in 2019. 
uh, and you decided to pay yourself with the PPP loan, you actually aren't eligible for anything um, for uh, because you didn't pay yourself in 2019. So there is a formula in which you need to consider for what is eligible of, uh, amount for a PPP loan, uh, and that's tied to your 2019 compensation. And essentially, you know, if you uh, look at 24 weeks, you have to look at your gross wages for 2019 divided by 12 times two and a half. That's basically the max an owner can uh, um, can elect for their compensation, and that's up to 20,833 if that uh, owner made more than 100,000 in uh, 2020, uh, 2019. Uh, there's also been a lot of clarification of full-time equivalents. I know. Uh, Back when the the uh, application came out, you know, full time equivalent for the SBA was 30 uh, 30 hours a week. You know, then further definition uh, indicated that for the forgiveness and for the PPP loan program, a full time equivalent is actually 40 hours a week. So anyone that works, you know, 40 hours a week or more is one FTE. Anyone less is a fraction of that. And then um, the SBA created a lot of exceptions for volunteer resignations, uh, folks that retire, um, termination for cause to not affect your forgiveness. Um, so those are all um, exceptions uh, that you can, you obviously need to provide documentation for when you determine your uh, quotient calculation for your reduction. And then um, there's also been a lot of clarification in salary uh, reduction test formula and how you um, put that together if that affects your company and that you had salary reduction. Essentially, if an employee made more than 100000 a year and they had a, a salary reduction, it doesn't affect their forgiveness. But if anyone that makes less than 100000 a year and you reduce their salary by more than 25%, it is added to the formula in your um, reduction um, on your PPP loan forgiveness. Um, and a few more highlights on the forgiveness application. So there's been a, a, a bit of change um, from, from the time the first application was issued. Now there's three different forms. The first one is the 3508S. And if you had a loan of 150,000 or less, um, you can use this form. Um, the, uh, it used to be 50,000 until um, the CA was signed on December 27th, and that increased the uh, application to 150,000 versus 50. It actually is very helpful for borrowers because it was very cumbersome to um, you know, do all these calculations for a loan of this size, especially if these are really small businesses for loans of 150,000. Then there's two additional forms, uh, the 3508EZ or the 3508S. So um, the EZ has certain stipulations in which you can use the form basically um, you didn't reduce the hours or wages of any employees. You didn't reduce your FTE counts. Um, or uh, the easy form, um, if you had um, to shut down due to government order, you could elect to use the easy form. Um, everyone else, if you don't meet any of the above two requirements, you have to fill out the form 3508, which is a, a bit more work because there's various schedules you must complete. And then um, you know, we get a lot of questions from Baker Tilly, how do you submit this form? You have to submit the form to your lender. Um, we can't file it for you because there's a series of certifications you must sign. Um, but of course, you know, Baker Tilly can assist with the calculations, guidance, what's included, what's not included, the documentation, ensure everything is lined up for the bank so it doesn't get pushed back 15 times before you get approval. Um, um, we're not, I'm not going to talk about these forms specifically. These slides will go to you after this presentation because I do want to move to the panelists. Um, but if you want to read through them when, when you receive them and if you have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out to us and we can help answer any questions. Um, and then let's see. If your organization has a loan that's more than $2 million, uh, together with your affiliates, um, the SBA did issue a new questionnaire called the um, uh, Sorry, uh, the 3509, which is for for profit, and the 3510 for nonprofit. So, if you are responsible for, you know, completed the PPP loan forgiveness application for for your uh, your company, um, together affiliates. If you have loans of more than this amount, you have to complete that, and it needs to be submitted to your lender and then to the SBA. Um, the instructions on the form indicate that uh, if you uh, you must submit the form 10 days. Uh, within 10 business days of uh, either request from your bank and failure to do so may may render you ineligible for loan forgiveness. Um, you know, 
the timing on when banks request that has really varied. Uh, we've had um, borrowers that submitted their application months ago has never been requested to submit this, while um, some banks are asking um, their borrowers to submit this with their application. Um, I would say, you know, if, you, if you're in an organization with loans of over two million, um, make sure you complete this. You know, talk to an advisor if you have any questions, because all of this is uh, utilized to determine your uh, loan necessity. Whether you know the SBA determine uh, whether you need this loan, because that was a certification that you needed to sign when you applied for the loan, and so it's pretty important. And um, and we've gotten a lot of questions and have assisted a lot of clients on this this um, questionnaire. Um, the I, earlier I mentioned there was quite a few more expense categories that were added as part of the CAA, and so these are new. Um, so outside of payroll, non-payroll costs, rent, interest expense, like previously, um, there's five additional categories of expenses: um, operational expenditures, uh, you know, software, cloud reporting, HR needs, whether you outsource your HR and accounting, that those are now included expenditures that you can include in your PPP loan forgiveness, um, property damage costs, um, supplier costs, and then workers' um, PPE costs, you know, to comply with any of the COVID-related um, health and safety guidelines. And then I think um, there was clarity on the employer-related uh, costs for benefits, because previously disability and group life really wasn't specifically outlined. Uh, group health, dental vision was. So now if you have those type of expenses, you can include that in your PPP forgiveness. Um, and you still have to meet the 60-40 rule, 60% on payroll, 40% on all other expenditures. Uh, you can do 100% payroll. That's what a lot of our clients are doing as well. You don't have to uh, meet exactly the 60-40 rule. Um, I'll talk quickly on the two um, federal tax implications on the PCP loan. There's, there's been a lot of talk on that. So previously, um, there was guidance issued that you know the, the loan forgiveness is excluded from gross income. Um, now that's been overruled with IRS uh, Notice 2020-32. There is no deduction allowed for any otherwise deductible expense of the payment of the expense results in the forgiveness of a covered loan. So essentially what that said was before uh, you um, could not deduct the expenses related to what uh, expenses were paid by your PPP loan from uh, gross um, uh, from your expenses to get to net income. Now, from a federal perspective, CA is now allowing it. So you're not going to have to include your PV loan as income and those expenses can be deductible. Unfortunately, on a state perspective, California is uh, non-conforming. So um, you're, you're not going to have to pay uh, taxes on the grant itself, if you obviously um, received a loan, but the expenses you used for the PPP, um, using those PPP funds are non-deductible. So there's going to be a tax component because your net income is going to be higher at a state level. So those are kind of the big issues with, with tax that's really kind of been in the last 10 months where a lot of clients are asking us on, you know, how do they treat it for tax purposes? So, um, you, you know, obviously, if you're working with a tax advisor, uh, that they should know this. Uh, if they don't, feel free to reach out. We can help provide some guidance there. And, um, and I won't talk about the specifics. Um, let's see, time, time is 2.32. So, we, uh, Tong, should we go ahead and do panel? And then at 1.45, we'll, we'll then break? Yes, sure. Thank, thank okay, you, great. Pauline. And thank no you problem. for um, the information. Uh, I'll first ask uh, Julie and uh, Gary, do you guys have anything to add to Pauline's um, presentation? No? Okay. So now I will start with my question. Uh, first, I, we've been asked a lot is how fast will I get my money? Most people want to know. I submit everything. How fast can I get my fund? Uh, Julie, do you have some insights? Uh, it's really um, the thing that's different from the last uh, iteration of PPP this summer is that when the lender, you know, you apply to the lender, the lender submits the information to SBA um, and SBA is actually going to do uh, the validation check um, on the front end. So as soon as we receive the information from the lender, we're going to do a validation check that will add, you know, a couple of days probably 
um, and then we will give the lender their um, authorization number, loan number, so that they can go ahead and close and disperse the loan. So it is going to take a little bit longer for you to actually get, you know, the disbursement, but it's, we just rearrange the process. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Got it. And I don't know if Gary wants to talk about it from the lender side, how long they're. <laughs> Got it. Um, <laughs> Gary, would you like to add anything? Uh, no, there will be all. So like basically, if we have all the document ready, all the support doc document ready, and we do our underwriting and we submit to SBAs, usually 10, within 10 days after we submitted to SBA, and then uh, the borrower can get the fund. Yeah, so like when you talk about how fast, it really depends on like uh, how, how, how comprehensive on your supporting document provided to the lender. If we have everything, and we do our underwriting manually in CDBC, I would say like within two, three days, uh, we can complete the, uh, to pack the package and send it to the SBA. Great. Uh, and, and Tom, I can provide some feedback because we're working with a lot of clients. You know, we saw the first loan funding kind of early last week uh, for a $2 million loan. And really there's been a lot of funding in the last week Prior to last week, we, we knew of clients that were approved within five days or at the soonest, uh, some obviously taking longer, uh, but we finally saw funding, at least for our clients on the West Coast, um, starting last week. Cool. That seems pretty fast. Um, so um, this question for Gary. Gary, you mentioned we should have a complete list of documents that are require, required when we um, apply for the loan. Can you see, um, share with us some underwriting secret that uh, that uh, you um, that people should know? So when they apply for the loan, they don't make the mistakes, and then they can get their funding faster. So, like uh, a little tips is not a big secret. Uh, is when we look at the when we look at the dollar amount of the of the applications. We will have to go back to check your W3. You need to provide your W3 and you need to provide a payroll summary so that the number is matched with the W3. The, a lot of problem that I have received is like people only have the W3. They do not have a prepared uh, annual payroll summary for us. There is no way for us to check it if you do not have a payroll summary. So like either when we see it, we have to have the borrower to you know create or to generate a payroll summary, annual payroll summary. It takes a lot of time. So if you can provide it before or submit it with the applications, then the process will go a lot faster. And the other and the other thing we see a lot of problem is uh, for the SBA rules, uh, the business has to open on or before February 15, 2020. How to solve it is you need to have your payroll taxes, uh, uh, you know, support document to show that you paid your payroll taxes on or before February 15, 2020. So basically we would just require a, a bank statements maybe in January, 2020, see or a, a before February 15, we see that you have paid the a payroll taxes, then we will take it. So like a lot of people do not have it before uh, when they submit the applications to us, it takes a, a, a bit of our time, you know, to request more supporting document. So basically I would say it's the bank statements to show that you pay your payroll taxes and the payroll summary so that like every single employees, their wages, because we, our wages is capped at a hundred, hundred thousand annually. So thank you. Oh, th thank you, Gary. So I do have a question from the audience um, for Pauline regarding ERTC, which I know you did not cover, are the payroll taxes that are offset by the ERTC credit deductible or not, similar to the PPP rules for the payroll costs used for the PPP forgiveness? Um. I believe those are not deductible. That was not an ex specific exclusion. Um, I can check again, just to make sure, because again, um, state and federal laws can change. Um, but the last time I checked, they are not deductible. Um, Julie, do you know, or have you heard? Uh, that one, I don't know, especially okay. I, I don't know the all the different state and local implications for sure. Um, Got but, it. Uh, uh, yeah. 
I was just I, trying I, to think I if I can pull on. it up. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, uh, and I do want to touch on the ERTC is um, you may want to determine, you know, if you had a PPP loan, um, you know, the calculations on what is eligible because you can't use the same gross wages on PPP and ERTC. So if your organization is in kind of that scenario, you need to determine eligibility and the way you calculate retroactive credit for 2020 has not been issued from the IRS. Uh, so there's going to be more guidance to come right now. So there's, um, so I would say talk to your tax advisor um, at some point, um, you know, guidance will come out and then we'll know how to determine that credit and, and how to, uh, you know, offset that against your, your yeah. FICA taxes. I, I will say we've um, reached out to some of our IRS counterparts and that might be a future webinar because I know there's lots of questions and I'm not even going to pretend that I'm a tax expert. So <laughs> we'll go to the experts. <laughs> Thank you both. So I know it is, I'm a CPA and uh, this tax issue, that's why today I invited Pauline to do the presentation. I just couldn't uh, get read my head around with all the tax law changes. So Pauline, um, I do have this uh, question asked by people. So if I'm a, you know, we're not those big business, if we're small businesses, I either don't have a tax accountant or I have a tax accountant. Is there any questions and I can ask them to make sure they understand they are up to date with all the rule, tax rule changes? Because as you know, not all the tax accountants are at the same level. So how can I make yeah. sure I'm really being protected and get take all the tax benefit I could as a small business owner? Yeah, so unfortunately, you know, we're, you're very reliant on your tax advisor and they should be taking classes or CPEs to kind of get up to date. A lot of the products, right, if you're using, if you're self-filing, um, uh, mm -hmm. will have wizards, you know, so if you're using, um, one of the tax software, it'll very be very specific in terms of the questions that you have. Uh, if it's a quick question, you know, feel my contact information is on the slide. So you can feel free to, you know, kick over a question if it's quick. Uh, I'm happy to answer that for, for, for um, anyone in the ABL as well. Great, thank you. So I have a question here. I'm not sure um, it's, uh, what, eight and the 24 weeks mean and what is the difference yeah i um i think he's asking about the covered period so the the same concept that has existed all the way throughout ppp program is that the covered period is the period of time you have to spend the loan funds so it'll start the day you receive the disbursement and it can go for eight weeks at a minimum or 24 weeks at a maximum. So it'll always be at least eight weeks um, up to 24 or anything in between. So if you spend all the money after 15 weeks, that's fine. Uh, and then you're eligible to apply for forgiveness. All right. Um, I think that's all the questions I have here. I know um, Fiona is, um, is wrapping up and we're drawing us soon. Um, I then let me ask one more question to Gary or maybe Julie. So if I'm a small business, I got all those loans, disaster loan, PPP loan, and what is the impact on my um, business credit score? Like if I want to borrow more money, would those have negative impact on me for accessing future? Um, capital, if I want to buy a building or doing other, maybe SBA 7A loan or something. Um, do, do, could you give us some advice on that? Uh, sure. Do you want to start, Gary, or do you want to be? Oh, you, you go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. You I mean, the short answer is that it shouldn't if you're able to, you know, pay, pay off the debt, like the idle loan, for example, is a loan, so it does have to be repaid. PPP, if you're able to, um, you know, follow the rules and spend, spend the money in the right proportions and um, have it forgiven, you know, there shouldn't, shouldn't be any impact. The only thing that I tell people to look at is obviously if you want to, maybe you're one of the, the lucky people who's been able to actually grow and expand in the last year. 
some new opportunities and you're looking for additional capital to continue your growth, they're gonna look at what existing debt you have. So let's say you have the idle loan at 150,000, they're gonna look at that payment term and factor that into your debt load overall when they're looking at you know, giving you additional um, credit or additional taking on additional debt. But it should not have any sort of negative impact if you um, if we you know if we do get into the situation where you're not able to pay, um, then that might be a slightly different story. But it depends on you know what you personally are are going through if you have to declare bankruptcy or what the default scenario might look like. So, um, but but on its face, it should not have any sort of negative impact on your on your credit score. Gary, do you have anything to add? No, uh, basically, Julie already covered all, all the stuff that I want to say. If you use, as I as as she say, if you use it in the right way, you uh, if you have the forgiveness and then it's covered, I don't see any like downside on your uh, debt to income ratio. And I think basically maybe you will give give you a more advantage because like your lender already know your background know your story, have worked with you on your underwriting for the PPP loan, it may give you some benefit if you use all the funds in the right way and then pay all your uh, all your payment. Thank you. Great. So I see um, our state treasurer, Fiona Ma, has joined us. Uh, um, Fiona, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, you know, thank you for having me on today. Uh, I hope everyone is safe and well and, you know, looking forward to the time when we can all get together again in person. Um, over the last year, my office has really pivoted to doing these online uh, resource guides that are updated on a timely basis. If you go to my website at www.treasurer.ca.gov, you will see two prominent buttons at the top. One is our COVID-19 official California website. And then the other one is the COVID-19 resource guides. So I have resource guides for small businesses, nonprofits, seniors, individuals, food access, tax relief. Uh, so we really encourage folks as we hear of programs that are coming online at the federal, state, local, and even private sector, uh, we put it up there. Uh, I also have a uh, dedicated email uh, that Catherine Asprey of my office monitors. Uh, we fielded some 750 uh, COVID-related constituent inquiries, and that is askfiona at treasure.ca.gov. So we would encourage you, today I got like two requests uh, from a seniors organization that says some of their seniors threw out the prepaid card. Uh, so what do they do? Because um, they now realize that it wasn't junk mail, right? Is there a way to track it? Uh, I have another call uh, for someone who had their uh, franchise tax board, um, franchise tax board lien their account, even though they had paid their payment and they had checks. So we are here to help uh, people. Um, please encourage, you know, yourselves and also your uh, constituents and, and other networks if they have any issues that you cannot answer, send them my way, ask Fiona at treasure.ca.gov. Um, my office also has a number of different programs uh, during uh, this time, and I'm more than happy to set up uh, an additional, you know, small business webinar geared to uh, your members. Um, and I bring on subject matter experts that talk about, you know, access to small business loans. Uh, if you're looking to retrofit your home or office during this time, we have programs for that. If you want to put in an electric vehicle charging station, or you have a diesel truck um, that uh, you know that needs to be cleaner, we also have incentive programs. If you are buying uh, expensive equipment and want to waive your sales taxes. Uh, if you're putting in equipment that's greening and cleaning our environment, we have incentive programs for that. And we also have income tax deferral programs for companies that want to come and expand in certain uh, areas, in regions, and uh, committed to hiring a certain number of employees. And that is through our Cal uh, Competes uh, program. So there's a lot of programs that we offer at the state. Uh, people don't know all about them. There's so many websites out there. Uh, folks don't know what's real and what's not real. Uh, so we're more than happy to come and tailor our, uh, our seminar for you. And we will organize it. You just provide a Zoom link and uh, um, you know help promote it. I will bring the subject matter experts to talk about all the different programs 
programs that are available uh, for folks. I know we're waiting for the new stimulus package. As soon as that comes out, there's going to be a lot of questions uh, from people like, what does that mean? If, if I'm a renter, if I'm a property owner, right? If I'm a, a sole proprietor, if I'm a cannabis business, I mean, there's always lots of questions. So uh, I, I thank you for your time and inviting me here just to give a little intro on all the things that we've been doing uh, at the treasurer's office. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for stopping by. So now um, we have two panelists offered us future webinars. I told you, you we will have more to share with you. Um, do I have more questions for and then I think if you guys want to I'll leave it open for a while. If you want to share your resources from uh, Julie from SBA or Pauline from your bank, you can type your information on the chat box so people can grab those. Um, other than that, do I have more questions? Anyone have more questions before um, we gave 10, actually we're wrapping up in 10, 10 minutes sooner than what we planned. Anybody have any more questions? Uh, I was just gonna add something, Tong. Um, I know sure. Gary talked about kind of the loan forgiveness application process with his bank. Uh, what we've learned from Baker Tilly's side is you know, working with many banks from community banks up to Chase, the process can be very different from bank to bank. The wizard, uh, the portal process can be very different. Uh, the required documents can be very different. The SBA issued very specific guidance. You know, these are one of the few, you know, support documents you may, you may need to submit for forgiveness, but we've seen some banks request all of them. So what may work for one bank and one business will not always work for a different business and a different bank. So definitely, you know, understand your bank, go through their portal when it's open and see what the specific requirements are and ensure you submit exactly what they asked for so it doesn't delay the um, forgiveness application process. I thank you for that. And I do have a question for Julie then. So I know for the second round of the PPP loan or the third round, you guys, um, the SBA asked the CDFI to start giving out the loan a week before the big banks all started. And I actually helped a couple of clients use one of those CDFIs. Are, they are actually very helpful. So could you share with us what those about and what are those CDF, what does CDFI mean? Maybe some people don't know. And who are they in the Bay Area? Sure. Uh, the, so when we actually this past summer when PPP was first launched, um, we knew that we needed to create more access points for potential borrowers. Uh, we had our regular commercial lenders that participate in SBA's programs, but then we started onboarding a lot of other financial organizations that may have not done business with SBA before, but were certainly capable of doing lending. So that included a lot of um, CDFIs, which are the, the credit acronyms, You're gonna make me remember acronyms. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they are non usually non yeah, nonprofit organizations yeah. that are licensed through treasury um, and they do lending that is often targeted to a community or a group uh, or a geographic area sometimes, uh, but they offer, they offer lending as do um, the MDIs, the minority depository institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's then also um, some CDCs, which are certified development companies that work with SBA's 504 program and others. And then um, ah, there was one other group that was in there, um, but they're, oh, micro lenders, uh, which typically do loans of $50,000 or less. So all of those organizations, uh, a lot of them, you know, had the option to sign up. We also onboarded credit union, a lot more credit unions. We also did a lot of uh, for, uh, online lenders as well. So we could create as many access points for people as possible. Um, since a lot of people might not have had a traditional banking relationship with, with one of the, the uh, commercial lenders in the area. Uh, you can find a list of who's been authorized to offer the PPP program in Northern California on uh, my district office website, which I'll put it in the chat also, but it's sba.gov slash ca slash sf. Uh, and then also using that PPP lender tool, you can find um, the targeted lenders in the area who are authorized to offer the PPP loans as well. 
Um, so this time around, uh, in, when we relaunched in January with the new funding or renewed funding, um, we decided, the agency decided to open up the portal, SBA's portal first for these more community focused nonprofit lenders like the CDFIs and the minority depository institutions as a way to enable um, some of our hardest hit communities or people that maybe struggled the first time to get, get the PPP loans so that they would have the first access points uh, before it was opened up to the, the more traditional uh, commercial lenders. And then on the 19th, I believe it opened up to every participating lender. So it was the effort to try to get into some of the targeted communities and give them kind of the first um, grab, if you will, <laughs> uh, in, into the program. Um, I can say uh, as of, I don't know if it's as of today, but it's in the first 20 days, uh, we have done approximately 72, almost $73 billion in lending. So um, we're looking at, you know, a ceiling of around 250 billion. So there's, there's definitely uh, room, room for everybody to apply, uh, whether it's your first time or your second. So I would say I, I used one of the areas, micro lenders for a couple of my clients. They're definitely more helpful. They have the back and, uh, you know, back and forth communication versus the big bankers or FinTech just communicate through machine. So I would just say right. actually it's been very helpful. Um, for, uh, so that's why I want to bring it up. So um, I was going to end with a question where the money runs out before March 31st. <laughs> it sounds like we should be able to last until then. Um, anybody want to take a guess where the money ran out? And when we run out, I will close out this meeting with the last um, guessing. <laughs> yes, Julie, you know, you're the crystal, <laughs> crystal ball, right? You know, it's so hard to predict. Um, I, um, you know, we're we're going at obviously the money is moving. We're going at a you know a rapid clip, but I don't think it. It's certainly nowhere near when PPP opened for the very first round and the funding went 14 days. I mean, we're not. We're definitely not in that kind of environment right now. Um, we're seeing the majority of these applications so far are actually people applying for their second PPP loan, which is a slightly smaller pool, as you know, because of the, the different parameters, uh, eligibility criteria around the second PPP loan. Um, but I tell people like, yeah, don't one, don't panic. There's still money there and definitely apply, um, utilize a resource partner or somebody if you need some assistance with that. Um, will it last till the 31st? I'm not <laughs> quite sure. But then again, we, we all know there's more talks about additional stimulus money, right? So there's a lot of balls up in the air right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. I, I actually have a quick question. Um, because in, in the previous round, you know, the SBA on a weekly basis, it provides staff and what was funded so far. We haven't seen that for this. This I know the SBA had a, a webinar last Friday that talked about the specifics on what's been funded to date. But I don't see anything on the SBA website. Any insight on where we can get some of that information as advisors, Julie? Yeah, for the funding so far, um, it was just told me today they updated the FOIA website. Uh, on the SBA.gov. So there's a lot of the, the loan data is on the FOIA website. And then I, I think I have to go double check. Um, but I think there's also a link from the PPP uh, site, but there's like a, it, they subdivided the PPP page now. So there's a data section. I, I checked today and I didn't see okay. any updates. So I was just curious. Okay. Um, yeah, I would check then the FOIA section on our website on SBA.gov. Okay. Uh, they might have just posted it there for some reason, but um, I haven't actually pulled it up yet myself. I was just going from a quick phone call earlier. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay, great. Thank call. you. All right. Thank you. Um, I will ask Victor to close out. We have three minutes left. All right. Well, this was a very informative uh, session here, and uh, I know it's very important for people to understand the process, the timing. And yes, uh, I, I do like your first question, Tong, when will I get the money? Uh, I, I know that's the important aspect of it. Um, you know, and I, I, I imagine many of the small business owners who are going through this, uh, you know, they're dealing with so many other variables. So if you 
by providing this information and uh, hopefully it was uh, it was streamlined enough for them that they know who the resources are who to reach out to and i also urge many of the participants here to you know reach out to your local sba your banks and experts here on the panel uh you know to ask for questions and i just realized that um, Julie uh, is also uh, Victor. <laughs> we didn't get to change your name, but uh, that's Julie, just in case uh, there's no two Victors here. But you know, on half on behalf of the Asian Business League of San Francisco, uh, I really do appreciate all your time, your expertise on this. Uh, but I know there's going to be more than likely another discussion on the next round of forgiveness. I imagine that's the next step after this in a few months, right, Tong? And yes. so we'll definitely create a discussion about that. And also, you know, uh, I, I don't want to say exciting because we shouldn't be in this situation uh, worldwide. But, you know, the next steps is really thinking about, hey, how do we recover? What's the next steps to grow the economy? You know, what resources can I reach out to again? Right. It'll be SBA again and other uh, micro loans or whatever it may be. And, you know, obviously that's the natural progression. So I can't wait. Uh, for us to speak about that next on more uh, more of a positive uh, term, <laughs> if I want to say that simply. Uh, but other than that, I, I want to thank everybody who participated. I, I thank all the panelists. And uh, I want to say have a wonderful day and week. So good luck, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.